Hey everyone and welcome to today's episode of the vlog. So, when a friend of mine asked me, can you help me get a van, Paul? I jumped at the idea, especially as he was willing to go down the salvage route. Now, he had a fixed budget. His budget was two and a half grand because the van is going to be used for window cleaning, so he's got to get a whole lot of equipment. So I thought, okay, no problem, two and a half grand. And that two and a half grand meant it had to be fixed repaired and delivered to him for that budget. Okay, yeah, I think we can do that. Now, he's not looking for a new van. He's not looking for something five or six years old. He's happy to go sort of longer than that. And that's understandable with a budget. But he did have some specific requirements. Had to be a small van. Check, yep, got that, that's covered. So these are the kind of vans that I'm thinking that you can see here. Yeah, they'll fit. Um, and then he then dropped the bombshell and said, oh yeah, had to be a three-seater. Okay, right, so we need to find a van that is a three-seater. That limits, that work makes it very limited what we can do. And there was only two vans that I could think of that would meet that requirement. And that was the Peugeot Partner or the Citroen Berlingo. So, had a little chat, you happy with those vans? Yep, yeah, absolutely happy with those, because he knows that those are the vans that generally come with free seaters for the size that he wants. And I know some other vans do have them, but the problem is that they're, they're far and few between. We gotta get this project done within a few weeks, because he needs, a, he needs it really to work with. I wanted to speak to you just very briefly about our sponsor for today and that is Ultimate Car Check. With the price of cars uh, rising rapidly, that's in the second hand market, it is absolutely vital for you to ensure that you're buying a car for the value that it's meant to be worth. And the only way you can do that is by checking the car to make sure that the car hasn't had any previous history that could be detrimental to its value. And that's where Ultimate Car Check comes into play. So, how does it work? Well, Ultimate Car Check is a check-in service which allows consumers to verify a vehicle's identity and check important vehicle information such as outstanding finance, uh, insurance write-off, etc. And especially useful when buying a used car. Okay, so let's take a look at the Golf GTE. So we can see that it's failed. And that's the reason why it's because it's been written off. And we can see the date when it's been written off. We can even see the tax status of the vehicle. Tax runs out in 17 days. Extended ID check allows us to be able to verify the VIN information that's on the vehicle. We can type it in here, click on verify VIN. It will tell us if that's the correct VIN of the vehicle. We can see when the vehicle next needs to be serviced. If we're gonna go down the main dealer uh, road. We can also see some information about the vehicle, technical information. So here we've got the battery information. We've got some performance stats of the vehicle here. We can also see information in relation to how much the vehicle will be worth if you were to buy it, if it was straight tax information. And then finally the alerts that we've seen at the top. And all this then all ends in our MOT history check. So we can see the history of the vehicle, when the MOT is about to expire and the mileage that was recorded at the last MOT. So all of this information is available at your fingertips. And of course, once you pay for the report, it remains in your dashboard for you to review at a later date. So to take advantage of this uh, great service from the Ultimate Car Check, click on the description below and use the coupon cars for paul which is in the description below and you'll get 10 percent off any checks that you use on their website right now back to the video so i made a list of bilingos that came up for sale and i looked at some partners and here's a couple of auctions of uh, how those went new bidder Bonus time. Sold on approval. Yeah, we didn't win that one. Um, that was kind of high hopes anyway. But then this one came up. Bonus time. Thank you. 
This is a hot lot. Bonus time. Bonus time. Bonus time. Sold on approval. So yeah, we won that. Couple of little tricky uh, bids around the 900 pound. I actually think we probably could have got it for slightly less, but hey, we won it. So with the fees and everything, it came to just over 1443. And that was delivered as well, which was pretty good. And what made that so cheap was because it was Newbury. Newbury is only about 45 miles away. Hence the reason why that one was so cheap. Now, the first one that you saw, I kind of let go because it was all the way up north. And uh, to get it delivered was, it would have just broken the budget with the stuff that needs to be done on the vehicle. Right, so vehicle is here. Let's go and take a good look at it. So let me show you our brand new project. Okay, so our project is a Bilingo, a Citroen Bilingo. Uh, I think this is a 2010 uh, model, so it's a 59 plate. Um, yeah, I believe it is a 2010 model. So let me show you the main damage. Well, what, here's a light damage. So we've got this dent in the wing here. Now I might be able to pull that out. I'm gonna certainly go into attempt to do that. And then just the general condition of the van is the bodywork, it's just been neglected. But this is absolutely fine. This will all come out clean and I'll demonstrate that to you because here I've done a bit of polishing here. You've got these little rust spots here and I've polished it off so it, it will clean up. And I also did the same here in the corner and that came up really nice and shiny. So literally all this is just city grime on, on the surface and it will come up. In fact, you can see a bit here, well polished as well. So the van will come up a tree, have no issues with that. On the back here, we've got these little holes and that's the lock system that was here, which is no longer here. That's a real shame, but we'll fill those and we'll just make good as best we can. Let's open the door and oh, in fact, the key, that needs to be replaced. The actual casing, because, uh, well, look at that. It's like a flick knife. Right, let's show you inside. So inside the van, it is a typical van. So it's pretty rough inside. But again, that will all clean up. It's got this rubber matting down here, which will lift up. And I think underneath the rubber matting, it's actually not too bad. I haven't looked at it in anger. I've just been just looking at the surface. Yeah, you see underneath here, it's actually pretty good. 
so what we'll do is we'll take this sideboard off and that sideboard back it's going to be used as a vin window cleaning van so it's not going to get knocked about and we'll give the inside a really good clean up as well uh, as you can see all around the sides it just needs a really good clean so we'll certainly get that done as part of the restoration this door doesn't open so the latch at the top here is um, it's not broken it just needs adjusting but we need to get into it to adjust it so it's basically not work not pulling open we'll get that fixed but I've got no concerns there uh, the door shuts pretty well in fact it's locked that's how well it shuts um, down this side we've got a little bit of scratch in here that will all buff out that's literally just surface stuff so I'm not worried about that again we've got the same thing there seems to be some kind of signage on here which is cause this rust spots but again that will all come out and come out clean this door well actually no we won't be touching that because <laughs> when we talk about it, that door is going to go so we've got a new door on order i've got to get this lock off this heat solution lock that might be a bit of a problem because i have the key but for some reason it's not opening so i don't know whether the lock has been damaged or something else but when the key goes in it just it's just turning it's, i'm gonna have a, another play with it to see if i can get it to work but it definitely isn't working so I'm gonna have to drill that out then of course we've got this door here that's gonna get replaced because it needs to be replaced uh, incidentally this van was owned by an electrician there's some telltale signs as you'll see in a second okay so inside the van is absolutely filthy and there's a scent in here of a cigarette so we're going to sort that out i've got a special machine that you may have seen before seats are really dirty they all need to be clean carpets are really dirty this van needs a proper good valet so we're going to do that what's in here what's that that is some kind of jungle former mosquito spray wow there are telltale signs of electrician classic screw fix so he's in the trade and then we got our sight guide here so yep uh, there's some plug sockets around and stuff there so all signs radio has been ripped out not really bothered about that we're gonna put a double din in here uh, I've got a one that will fit and replace actually the radio is original radio I think is underneath the seat here here we go yeah but I bet it's broken because there's this Heath Robertson set up in the glove box here that we'll need to sort out anyway let me show you under the bonnet So under the bonnet is not too bad actually. It's when I get it open. Right, eventually we got that open. Right. So under the bonnet, actually quite nice. It's dirty, that's all. So it needs a good service. Uh we'll probably bleed the brakes because that fluid looks pretty dark in there, so it needs a good old flushing through. So we'll sort out and tend the fluids, give this whole interior here a good clean out. Um, I just spotted something actually, it's got heads fitted in here. Hmm. Yeah, look, it's got heads. I don't think, I'll have to check that out because if these are not original equipment, then they're gonna be, that will fail the MOT. So we need to check those and see what they are. But yeah, it looks like it's got heads in there. See them there? Yeah, interesting one. Uh, it's got one of these poles, you know, for putting pipes and stuff in there. Typical electrician. Inside the engine bay, yeah, again, you can see really dirty, needs to be completely uh, clean what we're going to do is we're actually going to take these seats out because I mean look look at the dust up there 
this van has just never been cleaned that's not to say that the van has been neglected because when you look at the uh, condition of the engine and the MOTs it's, it seems to sell through its MOTs which tells me that it's been well cared for from a mechanical point of view but from the engine side or the interior the cab side it's just been this been lived in really steering wheel is quite pitted up so we're going to replace the steering wheel we've got a new steering wheel coming and then we're going to give this cockpit a really good clean out uh, we'll take the seats out and we'll just absolutely um, drench them and, um, and get them looking nice and clean so that's a plan there this pipe strange but yeah we'll take the seats out and then we'll just give it a really good clean out so it'll be literally like like new in here yeah so that is the project tell me what you think in the comments it's probably gonna take about two or three weeks to get this sorted I got all the parts on order and hopefully we won't find any other nasties I don't think we will because it's pretty straightforward but of course the interior here that's one of the big things that does need to be sorted out now this door here is really stuck fast but fortunately there is no damage to this pillar here it's a, it's absolutely fine it's not been hit all the impact has been taken by the actual doors themselves which is a shame really because this car has been given a category s and i don't think it deserves a category s because there's no other structural damage that i can see i've been through this van inside and out the only thing i haven't seen is what's behind this door but no one has seen what's behind this door because you can't open the door because of this so it's interesting why I'm, I'm puzzled as to why they were able to give this a cat s evaluation but yeah we'll get the door sorted we'll get it i mean i'll probably have to get my angle grinder and just literally cut this clean off down there if i can and uh if i can't get a lock open i will try and drill it first if i can drill it open then all good although it's a shame really because this is quite a good lock but he's going to be using it for window cleaning so there's not going to be anything really valuable in there to steal he says famous last words right so tell me what you think in the uh, comments down below as we get this thing ready uh, to be sorted okay so that is our project and like i said it's a uh, project with a goal we've got to get it in mot fixed up and looking clean for less than two and a half grand which i think we're going to do quite comfortably um all the parts i've already ordered so just waiting for those to arrive so next week we're going to start the strip down so we'll start we'll take off the doors and then we'll give it a good clean inside so taking off those doors are going to be very interesting and i feel that we're going to need quite a few tools to do that unless one of you kindly can tell me what's the best way to get or uh, get rid of one of those um those locks the he solution locks if you're familiar with that i'm thinking to drill the lock out but you tell me what you think is best okay good so um the project's going to take three different stages so we've got our repair part which is the salvage bit that a lot of you like to see only a small part just the two doors we want to make sure that the frame is is actually fine um and then after that we then got the restoration bit so that's to get the bodywork back up to a uh, good standard and i think judging by my test uh sample uh polishing that i did by hand that bodywork is going to come up really nice on that van it's just literally just been neglected and that's a good thing because often what happens with those vans because they have a thinner coat of lacquer applied to them and when tradesmen don't wash them the actual dirt actually forms a protection would you believe or i could be talking absolute nonsense it probably eats away at the uh the lacquer that's probably more likely but we we should be able to get the van coming up um looking good and then of course stage three is going to be the interior clean out um we're going to take the seats out for that absolutely strip the interior we're going to replace the steering wheel so that needs to come off and i'll show you some tips on how to get those off um 
which are pretty straightforward. Um, and then we're going to fit some ice into the car. Yes, I've got, um, let me show you. I've actually got one of these. So if you've seen any of my videos, the first video that I did um, many years ago, back in 2018, well, that's a long time ago, isn't it? So back in 2018, I fitted one of these, the no-name Chinese headset in my Mark I TT DVR6. And I bought another one to fit into white TT. Again, that's another one of my videos. If you look there, uh, the link, you'll be able to see that series. I fitted one of these. No, I didn't. I was going to fit one of these. So this is a cowling for an Audi TT. Since then, I've had this spare. Um, so we're gonna fit this in the Bolingo because it doesn't have any stereo system in there at all. Um, hopefully the speaker's all right. It's got some kind of cowboy speaker fitted in there and some system that someone has fitted privately. I don't know. We'll see if we can get this working in there anyway. Good. So let me know what you think of this project in the comments down below. I look forward to uh, reading those. In the meantime, don't forget to subscribe down here if you are a casual viewer and there are so many of you casual viewers, so subscribe because it helps with our analytics. Oh, and give us a thumbs up as well. Let's see if we can get this to a thousand likes because that also helps with our analytics. And actually there's a rumor that the like button is gonna disappear soon. YouTube are actually thinking of getting rid of the like button. Let's see what happens there. In the meantime, have a good week. We will see you on the next one.